Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am thrilled to invite you on an exclusive journey aboard Scintilla Marie, the astonishing steel trolley yacht that has undergone an epic transformation and rebuild. I am returning to the revered Darman Mascon shipyard, the birthplace and rebirth place of this remarkable expedition yacht. You may recall my last visit here where I got a behind the scenes look at the final stages of her awe inspiring build. Well a select group of guests and I have been granted the extraordinary privilege of embarking on a mini sea trial on this unparalleled long range autonomous expedition yacht. I have really been looking forward to coming back and visiting this boat and I can't wait to show you around. Before I show you around this magnificent vessel please don't forget to give this video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Before diving into the engine room's mechanical marvels, setting foot on the technologically advanced bridge or exploring the accommodation areas including the crew quarters, I want to show you around the upper deck. Because on the day of filming it was an open ship day with lots of visitors on board, I wanted to ensure that I did not get close up shots of the other visitors in my footage. To ensure that I maintain the intimate exclusive atmosphere that you've come to expect from my YouTube channel, I've tailored today's walkthrough to be much like those I film at boat shows, minimizing background distractions while maximizing focus on this yacht's most stunning features. On the forecastle atop the wow back lies Scintilla Marie's anchoring prowess, dual high holding power anchors each at 360 kilograms. Engineered for diverse seabeds, they ensure secure mooring from the tranquil Caribbean to challenging Arctic waters. If need be, the vessel also has an electric anchor capability, meaning that she can voyage to parts of the world that might be off limits to other expedition yachts of a similar size. Looking aft, we get a great perspective of this truly yacht's size and check out that foremast. Another feature that I love is the side steps and I know that in my last video they were quite the talking point. The original trawler was rated at 570 gross tons and an early priority was to bring the volume below the 500 gross tons threshold, principally by creating more semi-open areas. But another major modification was cutting out sections of the hull and bulwarks amidships on both sides with steps leading down to water level, which actually increased hull stiffness as there is a steel box reinforcement under each staircase. The bulwarks on this trawler yacht are not just about form, they're about function and safety. Built to withstand the harshest sea conditions, these raised sides serve as critical safety barriers while also adding to the vessel's aesthetics as well. The steel hull plates are 10 millimeters above the waterline and 15 millimeters below. Although not ice class, the hull is more robust than most explorer yachts. The extra thick plates also mean there is no washboard effect when the positions of the frames are visible, as is often the case with thinner plating, especially when combined with poor heat management during welding. As the hull was stripped completely on the inside, Darman Maskant took the opportunity to remove any dents, an inevitable consequence of the vessel's former life as a beam trawler. The run rails welded to the hull served as protection from the heavy steel beams when deploying and retrieving the nets. Of course, all modifications had to be approved by Rena to bring the vessel into class. Now let's head inside this beautiful boat so that I can show you some of the other areas. Let's start in the saloon and library area heading aft towards one of the main corridors. The day head is currently in use, but over on the starboard side is a compartment that houses some of the electrical switch gear and a small freezer. One thing that you will definitely notice throughout this yacht tour is the meticulous attention to detail. Now that the day head has become free, I can quickly show you in here. Although currently shut once the porthole is open, then of course this day head will benefit from natural light. I also like the fact you have these LCD machinery management and alarm control panels dotted around the vessel, a great safety feature. Let's continue our journey aft as I take you into the sizeable galley. 
Of course, this is no ordinary galley. It's a culinary sanctuary outfitted with state-of-the-art appliances designed to satisfy the most discerning of palates. Whether preparing gourmet meals for Arctic expeditions or intimate dinners in Mediterranean coves, this galley ensures that every dining experience is nothing short of extraordinary. And you will be pleased to know that the owners intend to offer charters aboard this one-of-a-kind vessel. Opposite the galley is a dining room with a TV and storage space for the china and cutlery. The owners of Scintilla Marie purchased the vessel in 2006 after she became available as part of a decommissioning scheme. She was launched in 1988. Beam trawlers were used to catch bottom-dwelling fish, including sole, place, turbot and monkfish. As we return to the upper deck, you will notice the housing for the boat's formidable steering gear. Make sure that you stay tuned because later in the video, I will show you around the astonishing engine room where I will share with you just some of the boat's amazing features. As we walk around the upper decks, I'm sure that you will notice the numerous skylights in the deck. In fact, in total, there are 30 of them dotted around the main deck and they allow lots of natural light to fill the accommodation areas. Shortly after this boat was acquired by her owners in 2006 and after an initial refit to remove all of the fishing gear and upgrade some of the systems, the project ground to a halt for almost 10 years as the owner wanted to come up with a work list and specification himself mainly by spending time on other yachts while juggling his business interests. If you are interested in finding out more about the history of this boat, then make sure you check out my other video that I filmed on my last visit. I'll leave a link for that video in the video description. Work resumed in 2019 when the shipyard began a full conversion by stripping back the hull to bare metal and removing the interior, decking and propulsion. After additional modifications to the hull and superstructure, all of the metal surfaces were sandblasted, primed and sealed. What you see now is really a new build explore yacht in an existing shell. The reason for the rebuild rather than opting for a traditional new build is the exceptional quality of the hull, not only in terms of seaworthy design, but also in engineering and construction. Scintilla Marie was the first of eight sister ships built by the Mascant shipyard near Rotterdam as it was then, but now of course is part of the Darman Group, which has over 70 years experience of building trawlers. The interior design by Vrepak is functional but also comfortable and not in any way sparse. In keeping with the vessel's original design, extra windows or portholes are limited in size and framed in brass. High pressure laminate panelling provides enhanced durability and impact resistance. Floating interior floors and low frequency insulation serve to minimise noise and vibration. In fact, when the vessel is in operation, it is super silent and there is no vibration. The owner of this boat grew up fascinated by tugboats and trawlers. A part of his family are fishermen from the island of Texel in northern Holland. And as a young boy, he would spend time sketching the workboats he saw there. At college, he borrowed money from relatives to convert an old tugboat and lived on board that for some years. In 1979, he emigrated to the United States and set up three successful businesses. But his old love affair with trawlers never left him. And as someone who grew up around fishing boats and trawlers, I can appreciate how this love affair stays with you for life. There is just something almost magical when it comes to boats which are designed to take on some of the extreme conditions which you find at sea. As we step onto the sun deck, the sheer scale and functionality of this space are immediately apparent. The sun deck serves as a prime vantage point for taking in panoramic ocean views, but it's not just about sightseeing. This area has been engineered for both leisure and safety. Earlier on in the yacht tour, I mentioned that the owner of this amazing boat will be putting her on the charter market. Well, if you'd like to stay up to date with when she will become available, then make sure you come and find me on Instagram, because as soon as I know anything, I will, of course, share that information on my socials. In the lounge area, the seating is more than just comfortable. 
is crafted from marine grade materials that can withstand both sun and salt, ensuring longevity and ease of maintenance. Let me take you up to the front of the sun deck where we will get an excellent view of the main deck and the wow back. You can just imagine the views you will get when standing at the top of that formidable foremast. It is also a great place to house the ship's radars. As I pan down you will see the skylights that have been engineered into the deck and the sheer amount of reinforced glass that is positioned over the top of the master cabin. Stay tuned because we will be having a look around the impressive owner's suite later on in the video. Remember if you haven't already then now would be a great time to give the video a like and also to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just one look at this radar mast and you can tell that this boat is designed and built for some serious offshore autonomous navigation. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. You join me back at the digital control panel in the corridor on the main deck. From here we are going to walk through the library and the saloon across the main deck passing the exterior entertainment area before venturing down into the crew accommodation. The saloon and library area is incredibly spacious and the large windows guarantee that not only does this area ensure that you will have excellent views but also that lots of natural light can fill the space. I would love to see what this boat looks like and feels like at night. For me, night time is the best time to be aboard a motor yacht like this, especially with the great use of all of the recessed and indirect lighting dotted around the vessel. Thanks to the outdoor galley and serving area, you could have some fantastic parties on board this boat. In conceptualizing Scintilla Marie, the owner was resolute about crafting a vessel that serves as an extension of home. The layout, functionality and flow of each space have been meticulously engineered to mirror the owner's unique requirements and lifestyle. The intricate balance between crew operations and private retreats stands as a testament to this precise vision for how the yacht is to be utilised. Adding yet another layer of authenticity and skill to the mix, the captain's history is deeply interwoven with the vessel's origins. He once commanded an entire fleet of Dutch beam trawlers, precisely the type of workhorse from which Scintilla Marie was reborn. This, in my opinion, lends an unparalleled expertise to the ship's navigation, perfectly complementing its design philosophy. If I was going to head back to sea in the private sector, then I would want to be a member of crew on board a boat just like this one. You can guarantee that you are going to be venturing to parts of the world in all of the various seasons. I doubt that there are many sea states which this boat could not handle. Speaking of crew, let's head down into the crew accommodation areas. After we've checked out the crew accommodation, we'll be taking a look at the guest cabins as well as the master cabin before venturing up into the breathtaking bridge and of course ending in the outstanding engine room. As we move into the spacious crew quarters, it's worth noting the accommodations are designed for nine members of crew. This aligns with the yacht's ability to autonomously sustain 15 days at sea. The vessel has a length overall of 45.6 metres or 150 feet, a beam of 9 metres and a draft of 5.1 metres, amounting to a gross tonnage of 499 gross tons. These dimensions contribute to its functional design which is optimised for long range travel. In terms of regulatory compliance, the vessel is registered under the flag of the Marshall Islands and adheres to the RMI yacht code. Additionally, it meets RENA C classifications which mark its suitability for unrestricted navigation. This trawler yacht also holds RENA Green Plus credentials, underlining a focus on sustainable practices. The crew accommodation is very bright and very spacious. Being on the main deck housed in the wow back also means that there is lots of headroom and that the crew can gain access to the upper deck 
during some downtime without disturbing the guests. I love the fact that the crew can get from their sleeping quarters to the main deck without having to ascend any ladders. You can start the day with a coffee while watching the sun rise above the sea. If you are watching this and you happen to be a member or crew aboard an Explorer yacht, then I'd love to know what you think of this accommodation. Let me know in the comments below. Join me now as we descend into the crew mess and pantry area. If you haven't already, then now would be a great time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The reason why I ask you to subscribe is that when I approach boat builders and manufacturers, the first thing they look at is the amount of subscribers that a YouTube channel has. On the starboard side, we have a crew galley and the various melee appliances. There is also plenty of storage space and a Bosch oven and hob. If you need to update any of the equipment on board your boat, then be sure to check out my nautical stores on Amazon. You'll find the links in the video description. On the pool side, we find an area where the crew can sit and relax during some well-deserved downtime. I also like how there is a porthole in here which enables some natural light to enter this space. As we transition from the crew quarters, let's delve into the realm of luxury and comfort that is the guest accommodations. With a capacity for up to 10 guests, Scintilla Marie offers a very comfortable, bright and roomy experience. One feature that often goes unnoticed but makes a world of difference is the climate control in each cabin. Uniquely designed, the climate control system operates silently. That's right, no distracting hums or whirs. Guests can adjust the temperature to their liking, ensuring a restful sleep without disturbances from the air conditioning. As we move through the guest accommodation area, notes the ample number of portholes and skylights. These architectural details serve a dual purpose. They not only add a touch of elegance, but also allow an abundance of natural light to flood the guest cabins. It's a feature that's especially useful in enhancing the guest experience, particularly for those who enjoy waking up to the morning sunlight. Now let's talk about utilities that impact guest comfort, but often go unnoticed. The water maker on board can produce an incredible 3000 litres of fresh water per day. In terms of both sustainability and practicality, this feature contributes to the boat's autonomous capabilities. Complementing the water system is the Haman sewage treatment plant, designed to process the black water. The boat has tanks capable of holding up to 18 cubic metres of both grey and black water. This is in addition to the 40 cubic metres of fresh water storage capacity. For those who may be concerned about the environmental footprint, the Haman system and the boat's Rena Green Plus credentials indicate a responsible approach to marine ecology, even as the lucky guests enjoy the luxuries which come with cruising on board this luxury steel trawler yacht. It's worth mentioning that the guest cabins are designed to minimise both noise and vibration. This is consistent with the overall engineering of the vessel. Whether the boat is cruising through placid waters or navigating more challenging sea conditions, guests can be rest assured that audible mechanical intrusions won't compromise their comfort. In summary, and in my humble opinion, the guest accommodations on Scintilla Marie are not just about luxury. They also incorporate innovative utility systems and thoughtful design elements. It's a blend of functionality and comfort that serves guests regardless of where their adventures may lead them. Having been a big fan of Repack's work over the years, I think that they have done an outstanding job on this boat. In my opinion, the owners have masterfully achieved a harmony between luxury and practicality. When you are aboard an expedition yacht like Scintilla Marie, navigating the few remaining untouched wildernesses and remote coastlines, peace of mind is essential. The last thing you'd want is the stress of damaging opulent interiors when you transition from confronting the elements to seeking refuge in your private sanctuary. Here, that balance has been thoughtfully considered, allowing you to explore without reservation while enjoying every comfort as you retreat 
to your cabin. When walking around these areas, it is easy to forget that this was once the fish hold. To think that when this boat was launched in the late 80s, the men and women who went to sea on this vessel would have been storing their catch in these areas. The level of skill required to transform this former trawler to a luxury explorer yacht is truly incredible. And remember, if you are thinking of planning your own nautical adventure, then I would highly recommend reading Ian McNeil's book, Circumnavigation and Ocean Passage Making. If you are interested, then you will find the link to Ian's book, along with a 40% discount code in the video description. I know that many of you, my subscribers, have already purchased this book and have found it to be a thoroughly enjoyable read. Now that we have finished having a look around the guest accommodation, let's head into the full beam master cabin and check out those watertight doors. You could literally create a citadel down here. As we enter, you'll immediately notice the generous amount of space in here, coupled with the incredible headroom. Again, we see a great use of the indirect and LED lighting. There is a separate toilet next to a huge shower. These his and her sinks are located directly under the original hatch that would have once been used to secure the boat's bounty of fish. Since starting my YouTube channel around 18 months ago, I've had the honour of venturing on board many incredible boats, but I've never seen a below deck master cabin like this. And of course, I'm interested to know what you think. So share your thoughts in the comments below. I can just imagine how hard it must have been to install these skylights into the steel hull of the boat. It is often said that boats are like nautical works of art, but I think that Scintilla Marie is more than just a work of art. She is a lasting legacy to the former Dutch beam trawler fleet. On the starboard side of the full beam master cabin, we find a comfortable lounging area as well as a work area that means that the owner can catch up with work related stuff whilst at the same time keeping an eye on the ship's essential systems thanks to this monitor. Before we head up to the wheelhouse and check out the formidable engine room, I want to show you the size of the shower in this master cabin. And with the fresh water making capacity that you get on board this boat, then if you wanted to, you could spend as much time in here as you want. As someone who often does most of my brainstorming whilst having a shower, then this would probably be my equivalent of a workstation on board. I am really looking forward to following the journey of this boat as she sets off on her future adventures. If this was your boat, where would you go and why? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I would spend five years following the same voyages that I made when I served in the Royal Navy, safe in the knowledge that I won't have to do any form of watch keeping or night shifts. I love coming back and filming boats which I captured during their build phase. When you see them coming together and then come back and see the final result, it really is amazing. The last time that I saw watertight doors this sturdy was when I was actually serving on board warships. Like I said a few moments ago, if you needed to, then you could probably turn this area into a citadel. And considering how many boats that I've been on over the last 18 months, this is the first time that I've mentioned the word citadel whilst being on board a private vessel. In here we have a server room as well as some additional refrigeration space. If you didn't know your way around this boat, then it would be quite easy to get lost on here. There's just so many compartments. As we exit the master cabin and venture aft, we find a huge switch room that leads into the engine room. Maritime Electro Zealand, a tried and trusted local partner of Darman Maskant, is the engineering firm responsible for integrating all of the electrical installations, including the propulsion, power management, automation, navigation, communication, entertainment and lighting systems. The hybrid system on board is based on an AC and DC backup grid that can be monitored remotely and provides four sailing modes, battery mode with limited power and hybrid mode with one, two or three diesel generators that are always running at constant loads, but more about that in a minute. Before we venture into the brand new engine room, I really want to take you back up to the wheelhouse 
so that you can see the amazing design and layout of the bridge. If you are thinking about your own refit, then I would highly recommend getting in contact with Darman Maskand. They specialize in 40 to 70 meter refit projects, have direct access to the North Sea, are located just a 30 minute drive from Rotterdam Airport and are centrally located among all renowned Dutch superyacht system installation and equipment suppliers. Chatting to the owners of this incredible boat and getting to know them during my visits, they could not speak highly enough when it comes to how this shipyard operates. But now let's head up to the bridge and I'll be honest with you, this was the part of the boat that I was most excited to see, other than of course the engine room. On the bridge deck aft of the wheelhouse, you have this really fantastic space that leads out onto the upper deck. The wheelhouse on board this boat is vast and it will be interesting to see what they do with this space. And check out those heavy duty doors that lead out onto the deck. Moving forward and passing some stairs which lead down to the main deck, we pass the bulkheads which are next to the two funnels. To starboard is a fully equipped ship's communication station featuring a GMD SSA3 system. Next we come to the fully integrated state-of-the-art Alphatron Alpha Bridge that has three 55-inch main screens and four 21-inch auxiliary screens. This is one of the most impressive wheelhouses on a private boat that I have ever been on. You can just imagine what it looks like up here when you are navigating at night. You can never have too much information when you are in command of a boat like Scintilla Marie and the remarkable layout means that everything you need is well within your reach. I was really fortunate to be on board this vessel during a mini sea trial as it meant that I could see this helm station come to life. It is simply breathtaking, but what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. Another great feature that I love about this wheelhouse is the fact that you can walk right around the helm station, meaning that during close quarter manoeuvres, the crew can get a great view of what is happening around the vessel. It is also a great place to stand when those massive waves come crashing over the bow. Of course, the state-of-the-art marine technology does not just stop at eye level. This wheelhouse also has an impressive array of equipment on the brow. I really like how all of the screens sit flush with the interior trim and how despite all of this equipment, not one monitor obscures the view outside from inside the wheelhouse. Talking of views, you get a near 360 degree view of what is happening around the boat, apart from, of course, the sectors which are blocked from the position of the two stacks. Thanks to both the port and starboard doors, you can also get quick access to the port and starboard wing stations. Note also how one of these 55 inch monitors is dedicated to relaying all of the various CCTV cameras on board the boat. However, you can configure these multi-function displays according to your own preferences. I was a big fan of Star Trek when I was a kid and I reckon that being in this wheelhouse at night is probably what it must feel like being on the bridge of the USS Enterprise. Even the two frigates and the aircraft carrier that I served on whilst I was in the Royal Navy did not have a helm set up as comprehensive as this one. But what do you think? I'd be interested to know if you have been in a wheelhouse on board a boat that is more impressive than this one. Let me know in the comments below. And the icing on the cake in this wheelhouse is the fact that they have an illuminated model of the original HD23. What a great feature and such a nice touch. And now let us head down into the engine room and find out more about the state-of-the-art propulsion system that moves this boat through the water. As we step into the engine room, we're entering the heart of this expedition yacht, a marvel of engineering and cutting-edge technology. At sea trials, the boat achieved the speed of 12 knots, but where Scintilla Marie really distinguishes herself is in her cruising capability. Running on just one generator, the boat can comfortably sail at 9 knots and has an extraordinary range of 9,000 nautical miles. That means you could go from New York to Sydney without refuelling, giving you an unparalleled sense of autonomy on the open seas. 
However, if the yacht is operating with IMO Tier 3 activated, a designation indicating compliance with stringent emission standards, the range comes down to 2,000 nautical miles, still substantial by any measure. When it comes to her fuel capacity, she can store 154 cubic metres of fuel, which is a necessity for long-haul expedition. The fuel powers an advanced eco-friendly hybrid diesel-electric propulsion system prepared for future integration of a lithium-ion battery pack. Her main propulsion is a variable frequency motor by Morelli, delivering 1300 kilowatts in a redundant setup. Turning to her generators, the boat is equipped with three 585 kilowatt 60 hertz Volvo D16 generators that are tier 3 compliant. An auxiliary generator, a Volvo D5, rated at 92 kW and 50 hertz, stands ready for less demanding power needs. For manoeuvrability in tight spaces, Scintilla Maris features a 100 kW bow and stern thruster, facilitating more straightforward docking and undocking operations. When connecting to shore power, this trawler yacht comes with a 90 kVA 60 hertz transformer, accommodating a range of power supply options when docked. And for the diving enthusiasts among us, there's a dedicated air compressor on board, allowing you to explore underwater worlds without relying on shore-based facilities. Clearly, every facet of this multi-level engine room has been thought through to combine performance, sustainability and self-sufficiency. This is an engineering space that matches the boat's overall mission. Long range, versatile exploration with a focus on environmental stewardship. Of course, one significant departure from the original design was the decision to abandon the 4,400 horsepower Duet's MWM diesel engine. Stricter emission guidelines dictated this choice, but what emerged is a technological leap, a cutting edge hybrid diesel electric system, with the heart of this system being a 2000 horsepower electric motor designed by Morelli in Italy. And of course, it is not just any motor, but a super silent vibrationless beast equipped with two separate windings of 650 kW each. This dual configuration allows for unique operational combinations, proving how adaptable modern marine engineering can be. And let's not overlook the potential for future integration with a 2 MW EST Flotec lithium iron battery bank. This advanced system is mainly planned for hotel load and peak shaving, but can also silently power the bow and stern thrusters providing a new layer of redundancy and operational flexibility. And check out the size of this spare propeller. I doubt that there are many things floating around in the ocean when it comes to debris that this propeller could not chop up into small pieces. The torque on Scintilla Maurice is incredible. Thanks for watching. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Darman Maskon for inviting me down. And of course, to the owner of this amazing vessel, for allowing me the opportunity to come on board and show you around. Remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, you can get in contact with me. I'll leave my contact details in the video description. And if you haven't already, don't forget to give the video a like and also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. A big shout out to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel by becoming a member. I really appreciate it. I fund these trips myself, so your membership of my channel really does help. If you're interested in becoming a member, then click on the link in the video description.